animations, battle BGs, battle sprites, cast, fonts, logos, sprite groups, swirls, title screen, town maps, windows graphics. All of these files can be edited in an external graphics editing software. I, in these tutorials, will be using a program called GraphicScale because that is what I prefer, but you can also edit all of these graphics in a sprite as well. Map graphics are for their own video as they are in a completely different format that isn't done with graphics editing. When you first open anything in GraphicScale, there's actually a couple things you're going to want to set up first, and that is grid sizes. So you can see exactly each sprite frame size within the image that they're decompiled in. I will put up a list of all the valid sprite sizes on the screen, along with other graphics. After opening a sprite in graphic scale, you're going to want to start adding grid sizes. So go to setup, add, and I will just speed up the process of me adding all these in. And once you have all of these put in, it should look something like this. 8x8 eight eight is for uh, separate graphics. You don't want to do that. Now I'm going to implement all of the battle sprite sizes. Now that all the battle sprite sizes are in here, I'm going to add other graphic sizes as well. Now that everything is in here, press OK. Now we can actually start editing sprites. Whatever you want in the project folder, okay. sprite groups, battle sprites, battle beats, what I listed earlier. We'll just edit Ness. And before I actually start editing the sprite, there is something I will need to go over because it's really important and it is something a lot of people screw up when they first start editing sprites. That's editing the palettes. Normally, with pretty much every other graphics you can edit in the software, um, you don't really need to worry about palette colors. But for sprite groups, you absolutely do because they use a specific set of palettes. And if you're going to be changing a color in one palette that a sprite uses, every other sprite that uses the same palette will have this change too. You need to keep that in mind. So let me first show you what happens when a, I change a color and then save changes and then try to compile. gives us an error. Invalid palette. That is because we need to change every other sprite and sprite group's palettes data to all be consistent with each other. So we have to head over to a website that someone made that automates this whole process. Welcome to the sprite group palette manipulator. You're going to want to open your project. Load all the files, and you notice down here there is a bad palette, and that is the one that we created with this sprite. So, bad palette on the right, and then choose a palette to replace. Now, notice there can only be eight palettes, so you need to be careful with how many colors you're going to be overwriting. Now that I'm going to be replacing palette five, we just rewrite this. Also, it's going to out for a second. 
Notice 75 images. Re so there are 75 sprites with palette five now have this change. So we look now every other sprite has this change now. Since I really don't want any colors to be changed this project, I'm going to show you how to undo the changes. The save and go back to the website. I need to reload the page. Project folder. Bad palette. Palette we overwrote. And everything is back to normal. you ever get confused about which sprite size correct for the grid, just kind of either cycle through them until you find what fits, or you can look up the sprite's ID in the sprite group's palettes, YAML. This uses 16 by 24, and that is common size used in the game for... I'm just going to make a simple edit, and it's Ness Smile. Now that we have a smiley Ness, save changes. And that's really about it for editing sprites. Um, each sprite has their own frame, as you can see, and based on which direction they're supposed to be facing. This is consistent through a lot of different sprites. Sprites that don't really have diagonal frames. I click that. There are several types of animations in Earthbound, and these are one of them. Uh, they're just called animations in the animations folder, and I will show you how to edit these. Each of the animations that I showed are in their own numbered folders within the animation folder and you cannot add any, so don't try. I will be editing the lightning bolt animation when a uh, car painter is trying to electrocute you. So you could open all of these frames up at once. I'm not really sure about editing the palettes these animations but notice that they have a very small amount of colors within their palette and that is for a good reason now these are pretty crude edits as i don't want to put that much effort into them but do be careful on how many unique tiles these animations have you don't want to add too many as there is something called a VRAM limit, which you should learn about. Then you just uh, save changes and then we can move on to the next thing. Battle backgrounds are kind of tricky to get right because they are easy to edit, but all of the unique patterns that they have are artistic. And I can't really teach you how to do your art. But one thing to note about these backgrounds is that they are optimized. They're organized. They, uh, they do not have too many unique tiles. In fact, there should be a lot of repeating tiles. Start to notice patterns. Changing the palettes for a background is totally fine. You can do pretty much whatever you want as long as there are only 16 colors. Actually really 15 as the first color is transparent. You don't really want to mess with that one. So now we have a red background. We could just save that and move on to the next thing. Battle sprites, uh, as long as you respect the sprite sizes 
shouldn't really have much of an issue with and just design them however you want save changes and we can move on to the next thing credits is made up of multiple graphics but here are some of them so these are all the names for each npc that walks up on during the credit sequence you really wouldn't normally edit these graphics unless you are translating the game but for some strange reason you need to you can just do it here And that's how you would do that. Save changes. As you could probably guess, uh, Earthbound has several different fonts. Zero is the main font. So then there's the Saturn font, the big font, uh, the battle font that's in the HP PP window boxes, for the party members, uh, the tiny font that appears in the, that displays the character names and other stuff in windows the top and then the credits font you notice there are extra characters down here that you can add and the game already supports that you would call in using a control code i'm not really going to edit the font but in case you do you edit it here and the font only uses two colors so don't bother editing anything else here inside the logos folder you'll have several other graphics that make up screens the uh, some of these aren't actual logos but they're just in here for some reason like soundstone and gas station death screens editing these you mainly want to be careful about palette these use a specific set of palettes so it changes uh some of these are actually going to get their own video because there are a couple things you should know about on how to edit specific things about them like the gas station soundstone and the death screen something i should mention about sprite groups is that some of them use a specific palette called palette 4 and it is what borrows colors from the map that the sprite is currently loaded in so they'll have a strange set of colors when you see them here. Like the cow, for instance. It doesn't actually look like that in-game unless there are no palettes that it can borrow from. So it just sticks to these colors. Just like uh, the animations, the swirls are also a set of animations that are used for specific purposes, like specific PSI attacks or... Uh, transitioning to a different area or encountering enemies are all organized into their own folders. There are a few limitations with these kinds of graphics. Uh, the one first and foremost, their palettes. They only use two colors, uh, but they can be recolored in the game's engine uh, using code. Another thing is the scan line limitation. Like, you cannot have multiple instances of stuff on the same scan line like this. No, you don't want to do that. Oil Snake will immediately give you an error if uh, the scan lines are messed with. Swirls are going to get their own video at some point, like making uh, your own custom animations for them and inverting things over and the whole process behind that. The title screen is also going to get its own video because there is way too much to explain that would make this video super, super long. Town maps are pretty straightforward. They, uh, they're just images. Uh, be careful about their palette and edit these on a eight by eight grid. You can also enable snap and then just copy and paste. Or you can just make it all from scratch. It's up to you. Making custom icons 
for the maps you want to be uh, there is something I should tell you about, and that is how you put them onto the map in the game. So, like, if I have this icon here, you would start all the way from the top left of each icon as a, their X and Y coordinate. This will make sense later. Windows graphics have, well, Windows graphics. You know, all the different icons and status effects and the slot numbers, smash. All of that is on a 8x8 grid. This, these control certain things in the palette in game. I could go an example. Make sure you don't have too many unique tiles. Need a simple pattern here like this. Save changes. And uh, palettes also here. There are also a second pair of graphics for the windows here for the linking triangle and edge boxes. And that's about it. Those are all the graphics you can edit with a uh, external graphics editing software like GraphicScale. Uh, there are other things you can do with this, but uh, they're kind of advanced so i will make a separate video about that yeah i have been saying that a lot but there's quite a lot to unpack